Monkfish Brodetto with cannellini. Monkfish Brodetto with cannellini beans. Monkfish is one of my favorite fish. The tail of it is delicious. It's almost like make-believe lobster, if you will. And it's nice and solid. Uh, usually, you can buy the whole tail with the bone in the middle. It has one center bone. It doesn't have a lot of the little bones. So it's a good fish to have even for children. I'm going to cut it into chunks. Season it a little bit with the salt. So like this now, when it fries and uh, the sort of the meat tightens, it will absorb the salt. Lightly flour it. And I have here vegetable oil. When you lay fish in hot oil, or for that matter, meat or whatever, away from you. And I know that a lot of you have the problem with fish or frying, for that matter, other things. It sticks to the bottom. Do not touch it anymore. You have to give it a chance to form the crust. A plate with a paper towel, ready to put the fish. So I'm looking. Yeah, you see, if you leave it alone, if you give it a chance, it happens. So I don't need to cook the fish thoroughly because I'm gonna braise it with a sauce and cannellini beans. So I just want to give it that crust. So I think that the munchage has a little crust on it. Okay, so we have the munchage. I'm going to close this, let the oil cool, just cut the oil clean up and then we'll make the brodetto. Arlene wrote in and she said, I've noticed when making many of your dishes, you use an enamel cast iron Dutch oven. Because I feel like this is an investment in cookware, I wondered if you can recommend the best size. It is, it's an expensive cookware, but if you treat it properly, it will last you forever and you can cook whatever you want in these vessels, if you will. You can braise, you can make stock, you can roast. But I would say a reasonable size for four people is six quarts. They go by quart size. So they have smaller ones, they have four quarts, they have eight quarts. You decide. So Arlene, I hope you're having fun choosing your Dutch oven because it's worth it. You'll get a lot out of it. So I emptied the vegetable oil and I'm ready to proceed with the actual brodetto. A little bit of olive oil. Onion. Let's get the onion in there. Gonna put a little bit of salt. The salt gets the water out of the onion. So the thyme. You grab it by the top, and you kind of just pull the leaves right out of, there we go. Okay, I think that's enough. I'm looking, the onion is at the right spot. Let's put the tomato paste right in there, and I wanna give the tomato paste an extra layer of flavor. Wait. Caramelizing a little bit. Just pinch of peperoncino. I like my brodetto spicy. And we will put the monkfish right in now. So the monkfish is a resilient fish. It's not like your regular white fish, bass or brancino, and that will break. It will stay in one piece, of course. You cannot abuse it in the mixing, but nice and easy, it will be fine. Just like that. 
This is the time. Flowers and all. And now I'm going to put vinegar right in there, directly into the bottom of the pan. Let the vinegar just get a boil. And you know, the brodetto is an old fisherman's recipe, for that matter. A lot of the cultures use the idea of putting vinegar, especially the fishermen out at sea, because vinegar is a preservative in the sense it the acidity keeps the food fresher longer. And now we'll add the water. Okay. Let me put some salt. Let's put beans. These are canned beans. You have to put them into the sauce at the right time because you don't want to overcook them. So the brodesto is just about maybe another 10, 15 minutes. So let me cover it. Let's cook for 10 minutes and the brodesto will be done and we will serve it. Joe sent in a picture of his chopino. Wow, he sent a lot of pictures. Are you in the business, Joe? This looks pretty good. Looks professional. The chopino is a wonderful soup, if you will, brodetto. So it looks great. And look at the scallops and you're having some wine. Wow, that looks pretty good. The presentation is beautiful. Fish cakes with lobster. Looks good. Very nice, very nice. So, so you know, you really impress me when you send in some things, guys. You're really good out there. Joe, you keep on cooking, and you guys keep on sending in your questions, your messages, your pictures. Ciao, till next time. A little bit of fresh chopped parsley, and it's ready to be plated. A little plate so I don't make a mess. Now, let me do the other one. And Lydia, where's Lydia's? Okay, my little plate. And a little monkfish, oh, a little bit more of the peas. I like the beans. Maybe I'd like a drizzle of oil. Okay. Mmm. And Lydia gets a little bit of oil. And then I have a little flowering thyme in my garden. I just couldn't resist putting a little bit of the, the thyme right into the dish. Let me taste. Let's see. The beans, nice and tender, really good. They absorbed the brodetto and a little bit of the acidity. It really is delicious. It's a full meal and it's a delicious meal. And of course, a little vino. This is beautiful. And I have some leftover for you. Oh yeah, you can come over. So. Tutti a tavola a mangiare! Mm. Another very important work, shall we say, was to provide and to save the bounty of the summer for the winter to come. Beans, string beans, white cannellini beans, but if you let them grow and mature, those pods really get filled up with big beans, which are the mature beans, and the pot itself begins to dry, and the plant begins to dry, and grandma would let all of this happen. We would eat our fill of string beans when they were green, and then she would let the whole plant let it dry in the sun. And when it was dry, the leaves and all, she would pluck it up like that, shook off the dirt, she would put a big burl up, and we would sit on little scagnetti, little stools, and we would there sit it around, all kids, shell the pods, and have the beans drop all in one place. And we were kids, we were fun, you know, we were throwing little beans at each other, so on, until grandma got mad. Grandma would make this her sash for the whole winter for pasta fagioli and for soups. And as expected, grandma 
will accompany us to the table with the song. So, let's go. Fior di verbena, se qualche pena la morti da, fa come il vento che in un momento poi passa e va. Fior di verbena, se qualche pena la morti da, fa come il vento che in un momento poi passa e va. Cin cin! Salute, cin cin!